What's up guys, so I know the posting has been beyond inconsistent, but as you can probably tell from today's video, it's like an absolutely crazy one. I don't want to hold anything up too much before we get into it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join the winning family. You already know what to do. But um, so basically I go over to Xavier Grimble's house. We talk about sneakers. We talk about his time in the NFL, which he, by the way, is still a current member of the Pittsburgh Steelers and a really important member of their offense. Roll the clip. To his right, to Le'Veon Bell. He'll come back to the middle. Xavier Grimble, opening drive, Pittsburgh touchdown. Really friendly guy, has really, really good answers to all the questions. Like, it's just a really dope kind of experience slash like interview slash like opinion from someone who you don't usually get those kinds of opinions from so without anything else get right into the video roll the intro also guys before we get into the video for all my las vegas people i need you guys to know that this saturday at 10 a.m we're having like a crazy event at capital which is by the way that's the stock room that i'm in right now it's basically just going to be like i haven't had a mean green here in a while like basically since sneaker con i don't think i've actually like had a little event here but i don't want to call it a meet and greet like i'm not like that kind of person you guys know that a lot of you guys have met me you know i'm not that kind of person but it's just going to be a really dope event we're going to have like free rejuvenator like we're going to have like a five dollar sneaker sale that capital is doing there's going to be like a twenty dollar mitchell and ness like the shorts that are like 125 bucks they're going to be like twenty dollars uh, there's gonna be like a key master there's gonna be like all different kinds of really dope stuff going on and some surprises So if you are in Vegas or can get to Vegas on this Saturday I highly recommend you be here at 10 a.m. I'll put the address of capital over my face now and uh, I'll see you there now roll the intro So what was it that got you into sneakers originally? Uh, honestly, my friends, my peers. Uh, and then I guess like everything I was just involved in. I always played sports, I always played basketball, football. Um, I was just watching, you know, TV, watching ESPN. If I was watching ESPN, I was watching MTV, BET, Rap City, um, follow all the rappers, you know. So, I mean, fashion has always kind of been a part of me just growing up. So. When I got to like, by the time I got to middle school or high school, I mean, you weren't like one of the cool kids, so, so to say, if you weren't like, you know, in tune with when uh, exclusive shoes release or when, you know, how stuff is dropping or, you know, trying to get your hands on some of the most exclusive like kicks and stuff coming out. How has being around other athletes all the time kind of affected the way that you collect sneakers? Does it like push you to collect more because everyone around you has them or does it make it played out? Hmm. That's a good question. I feel like, just like anything else, it's like, you just want to see it being done right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never really like the John judge people anyway, but when it comes to kicks, like, um, I just like people who, who are really like into the shoe and not just copying them just because everybody else is copying them. So, I mean, I know a couple guys that they got volume, you know, they got a good amount of money so they can buy all the shoes. And then I know guys who really know shoes, like, they know the exclusive things are dropping or they know why a shoe is actually even hype or exclusive, you know what I'm saying? So, um, for me, it always makes me want to call more just because there's always going to be a few guys, you know, like me, that are really into shoes, that know about them. Um, and then, um, it's always it's always a fun sport, I feel like, copper kicks. So you obviously have a lot of shoes. How do you obtain them? Do you get them from brands? Do you buy them? Like, how does an athlete go about getting sneakers? <sighs> Nowadays social media and everything. It's way different than standing in line and getting the shoes. Uh, people hit me up on IG, uh, Twitter. Um, I got a big so a big foot, so I, I reach out to people sometimes, but it, a lot of times it's word of mouth with the size, like 14 or 15, because even if they get them in, they might only get one or two. So then it becomes a matter of, can I get there in time enough to even get that one or two pair? Um, so really just uh, knowing the right people and then uh, putting it out there now with social media, Nowadays, you know, with being a professional athlete, all I gotta say is, uh, I need a size 14, 15, and so and so shoot, and then somebody or one of my friends or somebody will tag me or somebody will send me a DM or something like, oh, I, I got this, so I have the shoe you're looking for, or I don't have that shoe, but I got this, you know what I'm saying? So just like that, word of mouth, pretty much. So being a part of organizations in San Francisco, New York, Boston, and Pittsburgh, how does the sneaker culture kind of compare? Is it like way different in San Francisco than it is in Pittsburgh, or is it all kind of the same? It's like, to me, it's like to me, LA or you know California, the Bay, 
LA, LA, California, Bay, and New York. It's like the polar, you know, kind of like the fashion capitals too. So I mean, in between, uh, not so much, but they actually, for me, it works out because there may be not as many people into shoes around those areas. So sometimes I get lucky and shoes would be sitting around for a long time, size 14 or 15. But um, in LA, I mean, it's, it's huge. And in the Bay, you know, everybody's mixing shoes or trading or, you know, they have sneaker events. And same with New York, there's always some type of sneaker event, sneaker exchange or something like that. So I feel like LA and New York are probably just like the polar for the, the sneaker shoes. And then in between, you know, not that they're doing bad, but I mean, everybody's coming through those coasts. So I mean, there's just so much going on. All right, so the last question, what is it like being an NFL player slash sneaker head? Uh, honestly, it's almost like a dream. Cause I mean, I feel like when you're a kid and you know, you want all those shoes, you want all those kicks. Um, well, if you become a professional athlete, like you can afford, you know, a lot of shoes, a lot of, um, a lot of sneakers. So I feel like, and you're a professional athlete, so it kind of makes you able to network with people and uh, reach out to more people. So you're able to really get your hands on more shoes. I mean, obviously, you know, like sometimes more about who you know and how much money you got to get a shoe. And so like, I feel like, um, to be an NFL athlete, it has its pros and cons. I mean, obviously, you don't have as much time as some people during six months, but then I get a couple months where I'm off. Um, but it's a dream come true. I mean, I've been wanting to play in the NFL since I was six, seven years old, and now I'm here and able to provide for my family and buy a bunch of cool sneakers at the same time. So it's pretty dope. It's a dream, though. I don't wear phones too much no more. I just remember when phones was coming out. These are pretty cool and like, these used to be the only shoe that always made like a 14 or 15, so I just always get excited about that. Have a big foot. True blues, these are always a classic to me. Like, you just can never go wrong. You can wear them with so many stuff. That blue, that gray, that uh, that solid white would just go good with fresh white tea, everything. These are probably a new favorite for me right now. These right here is the quality just cause obviously the black and the white going to SC, so fighting on like, that's just like, as a whole, I just got a whole personal attachment to them right here, just because of the whole format. These low key became like my everyday shoe for real. Like, you know, you know, living up in Pittsburgh in the wintertime, it's cold, but you still want to put some cool, decent kicks on. Like, I just found a love for these, these weak ones. Like, they get through the snow, through everything, and they always look pretty cool. Even though I, I got them dirty a little bit, they still look nice to me. Another rotation I gotta go with, but these, any shoe that came out when I was like growing up is always like special to me, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna always go back and try to cop if I see it, and, you know, it's that OG, I'm gonna definitely cop this, it's probably like 05 or 06. I mean, I got like, you know, it's hard to find designer shoes in my size, but I, I find an occasional Louis Van or something, or Another new favorite, these are uh, Rockefeller ones. Just cause of the leather on them. These also, I remember my mom stood in line when I was in eighth grade for Christmas to get these. She always told me about that story. I'm sure I'm gonna fight to get these shoes. So these got, I got personal attachment to these. I just caught these today. Probably my, one of my, you know, most hyped shoes right now, the Off-White Mamas. I'm actually surprised I got these today. They never had stuff my size. Ferraris, you know, love those, can't go wrong with those. I thought these were dope. Space Jam. <laughs> Space Jam was definitely part of my time, so. If you don't like Space Jam, you probably don't like Jays. Low Top Taxi. These are definitely one of my favorite twelves. I don't know why, but I just remember eighth grade when I got these, right before the first day of school. I thought it was the man. And then these, this, I don't know, Jordan back, I feel like back in the day, he just do some cool colorways, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that was just a cool colorway back then. I knew I would buy that shoe. I didn't even get it when it came out, but I knew I would buy it later on, because it'd be dope. Um, eight and I just like those. I thought it was a dope shoe. Up tempos, I rock with two. And then, can't go wrong with it. These bad ones, these real ones, I needed these. 
definitely with those in my closet. Yeezys, huh? You gotta get a pair of Yeezys. They're just too comfortable not to buy. I feel like. Uh, these nines, I just always mess with because of Space Jam again. These olive nines, this is probably, to be honest, probably one of my favorite nines. One of, one of the original, you know, retros. Overalls, obviously you can't go wrong with a solid black suede. Drake did his thing, he always doing his thing. You getting the eights that are coming out? Uh, I'm not sure. The eights look so big on my foot. I wear a 14 or a 15, so they always look bulky on me. I always be second guessing getting the eights. Again, another shoe I got personal attachment to. I remember when I was too small to really go get these. And I didn't get them, but I seen them. When I was able to get them, I think I was in high school or college, and they came out and they had like the, the mesh right here instead of the leather. And I always wanted them to call the little ones, so my up tempos. <laughs> these are crazy. I got these in Utah. Low top 13s. I don't know. These are just a cool shoe. I end up having 13s. I like 13s though. I think my favorite ones are like the uh, He Got Games. That was one of my first J's I ever picked up ever. 